Now, we're going to make things even better for you right now and bring in our first guest of the day, former BYU offensive lineman and one of Johnny's former teammates, Ului Lapuaho. Louie, welcome to Studio B. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> Man, uh, you picked quite the day to come in. I know. And, jo and join us here. It's the best day. I mean, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to feel comfortable, so at least I have one friend here. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, hey. I, I, good. I'll, I'll let you guys find who yeah, one the friend, friend is. One teammate, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want you to know, I just had visions of Big Louie running down the sideline at Rice Eccles Stadium in 2016 against Utah after catching a pass that was not intended for you. One of my favorite moments in the history of the rivalry, my friend. I, I, uh, I remember that clearly. Well, that's one of two plays that I remember vividly, and uh, my only regret that play was that I didn't score. <laughs> <laughs> Your teammates give you a hard time about that? I mean, no. It was, man, I would have to look like, you know, Marshawn Lynch to <laughs> score, but yeah. that's the biggest regret is I didn't look like it. So. Got a first down, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to pull. Oh, okay. <laughs> Louie, nobody wants to tackle Big 70. Well, that guy, Let's like, go. he yeah. went to my shoelace. I should have just picked my foot up and Heard jumped. Him. That was like but, four or five speed right there, Louie. Oh, man, yeah. That's the 4-4 four, four forever right there. <laughs> Seriously, one of my favorite highlights oh, in the rivalry lore. Oh, I felt like that was longer. I don't, that looked like it was 10 yards. It felt like it was 40 yards. <laughs> I well, you did you. run a long way, and you caught that ball way behind the offense, or the, the line of scrimmage. So That is true. Give yourself some credit for that. Yeah, you had a much more memorable run than I did. But, <laughs> but tell us, what are you doing now? Like Now that kind of you're done with BYU football, what's next? So now I'm just working. I mean, I have a wife and son now just living the regular dad life. And, you know, Justin, from athlete to, you know, fan. So Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. What's the difference of watching a game on the sidelines when you're playing and you're in the heat of the game around your teammates compared to just being a fan watching at home or watching in the stands? So when I was on the sidelines, I was either talking crap or talking to my teammates. So uh, either, crap. yeah, Coach Kalani was telling me to be quiet. That's that you're going to get us a flag or – my friends were telling me, like, hey, what do we got to do? So, But now it's like either my wife's telling me to be quiet or my mother-in-law, who is a <laughs> – I'm married a Ute fan, well, into a Ute fan family, so it's 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 hard, really hard. Louie. I know. You're in a house-divided situation. I've, I've converted my wife, so, I'm, you know, I'm working towards <laughs> – Okay, okay. Getting more. It but starts there. It, it starts there. It's fun. Yeah, but it is a tough transition, I feel you. I mean, this is my second year out now, and it's tough. I mean, you see me active on Twitter, probably a little bit too active, too emotional, but you're starting to get into the Twitter game as well and giving your opinion out there. I mean, you have to, or else like, it just <laughs> bottles up and you just have all these negative feelings. But, yeah, I just got to be out there and telling people what it is and how the kids are, you know, how the players. I shouldn't call them kids, but how the players are, you know. Well, you are an old yeah. man now. Yeah. yeah. I'm giving you. Oh. Those kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 they did call me old man, so <laughs> they deserve to be called kids. Grandpa Louie with us on BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. Let's talk about the play of this BYU football team and not just take your analysis on Twitter, but let's bring it to live television and live radio, my friend. How would you assess the play of this BYU team thus far in the 2019 season? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same as everybody else has been seeing. It's inconsistent. I mean, we've proved that we could play great in times with our two wins against Tennessee and USC. Like, we looked amazing. So that's why my blue goggles and, you know, we're on – after that USC win, I was like, we can compete with anybody because those are five-star recruits. But then we go against Washington and Toledo and, and Utah. You could see it. Like, there's a little bit of nervousness. It's, it's, it's not talent that I would say we're missing. It's, it's the mental ability to execute. And, you know, that's when you get those ticky-tack small penalties of hitting a guy out of bounds or jumping off sides when you know the count. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just inconsistency. And if... If we can just pull that all together and, you know, not hurt ourselves, then we'll be able to go undefeated for the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I mean, we've showed flashes <laughs> of brilliance, right? Like you brought it up with USC and, you know, we can do it. We just need to put together a solid season, not just a solid one game or two, but kind of you're an O-line guy, but talk about your standouts. Who have you really been impressed with so far this season? Oh, geez. Well, I'm impressed with all of them. I don't have favorites, guys, besides <laughs> you know who's. But uh, I mean, I text those guys, uh, some of the guys every uh, every week, and you know, my standouts I would say is Keanu. 
Um, Salia Paga. Salia Pianga. Yep. He was a D lineman when I, he first came in. I remember being one of the hosts of him when he was a little D line recruit, and I was thinking, man, I can't wait to push this kid around. But now, so I think uh, Keanu's done well. He uh, moved from guard last year to tackle this year. That surprised me. Um, another guy besides, uh, I mean, besides the three that have been starting um, would be Chandon Herring. Okay. You know, I like this guy. Um, one of the hardest working kids I've known and really strong. And I've been pleased with his play. Um, I want him to be a little bit more angrier. But okay. not to the point to where you do, you know, get some flags or whatnot that come with playing angry. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's he's naturally a nice guy. You should see Chandon in the weight room. He's cleaning the house. Like he is. <laughs> yeah. He's super strong. But I agree. Maybe sometimes he is. Yeah. Too if nice. I could just take some anger and just, <laughs> yeah, just put it in him, in, just inject him with inject uh, him with a little bit. Of, yeah. Then, then I'd be really happy with him. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's why you were so successful. <laughs> you had the injection of crazy. Probably too much. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was one play that you were pretty angry at. I, I, I don't know if there's a gif about that somewhere. <laughs> or... hey, same same team. We we both, you know, Boise State. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's, you. it's that yeah. blue team. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Lapoao with us on BYU Sports Nation. What advice, if you were given the spokesperson role to BYU football and you were addressing the whole team, after Toledo and before South Florida, what would you say to that group collectively to help them bounce back? I think, well, the thing that I would always revert to whenever I was getting um, out of, you know, out of my rhythm would be to trust your training. Uh, my first coach I had when I came to BYU, Coach Tuja, he drilled that in our head. Like we would be doing 100 plays a day and it, we'd be tired. And when you forget everything and you're fatigued, the, the one thing he told us to remember is trust your training because it's not like it's not like Kalani or the coaches are setting these guys up for failure. It's not the first time they'll see the looks that they're getting on Saturdays. They'll practice it. The thing they need to do is they need to trust their training and, and execute it because they have in practice. That's the reason why they're out there on the field. Why do you feel like Kalani Satake is really close to turning this thing around for BYU and getting the Cougars back to – national prominence and winning eight plus games a season well i think he's close because i've seen i, I mean besides being a part of the program um and seeing the change in a lot of guys i've seen this this year like guys that i haven't expected to play and do well like on the defensive side they're doing well so he's definitely getting you know the the players to do what he wants them to do it's just to do it consistently and to do it every week in and week out now, schematically, if you were a coach, okay, and, and this, is, this is not saying that the coaches aren't developing good game plans. Or whatever, but yeah, just, I don't want to get beat up by exactly, my, you know. From an outside standpoint, from, from your view, is there something that you would change specifically on the offensive or defensive side of the ball in terms of scheming as BYU moves forward? Um, I mean, one thing I wouldn't, I, I, I mean, geez, I like being under center. That's the only thing I would change. I do know that we do have, you know, great quarterbacks. So that's the reason why we need to be in shotgun so they could see the field and see their reads. But I do like being under center. The first year, Grimes, well, last year, Grimes came in. He brought a nice system. I like, you know, his cadence systems. I want to just go back to that. But I think that would favor the O-line more than the quarterback. So, but... That's the only change I would see. Well, uh, this is a good take because you're not alone, especially in those third and one situations. When you look at the offensive line, and maybe this is just because you're an offensive line where it's like, we're going to get <laughs> one yard if we're under center. Yes. And that's why, you know, we need to. And so, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting a little bit uh, choked up. Get emotional. I'm really emotional about this. <laughs> we haven't uh, seen each other in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, getting under center will fix a lot of things. Okay, so if you – kind of the part of the question of the day, if you had to choose one guaranteed win for the remainder of the BYU regular season schedule, who are you taking? See, this is a hard question because I do not like both teams. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a brother that coaches at Utah State. He's a GA. And then I know – you know, I think it, Utah State is the most important. And if I, by most important, I mean like – by a decimal, by .01. Okay. It's, I mean, it is a it's compelling important. argument. That's fair. Yeah. It's a compelling argument because Boise State's at home. BYU's had <clears throat> struggles at home. But 
you're looking at maybe losing three in a row to Utah State if the Cougars don't beat the Aggies this year. And that's a no-no. That's probably hasn't happened in our whole history. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like you said, right? Boise is probably a bit of win, yeah. but we got to beat Utah State. We have to look good at home. We can't lose recruits to, you know, those guys up north. So, and I need to be able to have some trash talking ability within my own house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do it for Louie. <laughs> Let's get the hashtag trending on Twitter, do my it friend. For Louis. Hey, it's great to have you here, man. Thanks, it's great. Let's do here. it again, huh? <laughs> bring back your Twitter analysis and let's uh, let's give it to a live audience. <laughs> We'll see. I've, uh, I've, I've deleted more tweets than I've uh, sent out, so <laughs> it's hard. This shows maturity to me. Type it out, read through it, and then sometimes you're like, you know what? I'm just I'm not going to tweet that. And that, yeah, so I've 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 probably have a hundred deleted tweets or drafts that I'm like, you know, I need to just. Yeah. I also have about a hundred drafts <laughs> ready for when we beat Utah next. Man, it's gonna I'm gonna get banned from Twitter. I'll tell you that, but it's, yeah. been, it's coming. Just save them in the yeah. uh, drafts. Good stuff, <laughs> Louis. We would uh, like to sign our you to have. Uh, to sign our flag during the break. So we'll hand you the Sharpie. We'll take care of that during the break, and then uh, we move on. Yeah.